Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab, and today will be another video about Synology NAS. In this video specifically, we're going to show how you can create users, group, and other space setup in order to make your Synology NAS be usable for you. In this way, after this video, you know how to have different users and how to configure it in the best way for you and configure the applications. The reason that I'm posting this video is because one of the previous videos that I posted a few weeks ago, I show how you can install a Synology NAS in a normal computer, but I didn't show how you can configure it in order that you can use that device. And it's really important for you to set up users and groups for different people in your house. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show you this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and Let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to show how you can create use and group in your Synology NAS and how you can manage it, let's start for the basic. First, you need to have a system that have Synology NAS or DSM running it. One of the previous video, a few weeks ago, I post how you can use a normal computer and make to work this operate system. In this way, you can use any device to do this activity. So have this one in mind. Now we can come here in the computer and we can look for our system. In this case, I'm working a computer and running this DSM. It's not a proper knowledge in us. And if I come here, here will be healthy because I have only one internet connection in my computer. I have only one LAN. If I have more than one, they will appear other LAN and the IP address for each LAN. If I have a different connections or different VLANs, you can connect it separately as well. Here in resource, if I click here, it will appear all the resources and what is going on with my system. My overview, my CPU, memory, disk, and other things. What's interesting is here in my task manager. Here in my task manager, it will appear all the application that's running. And here, if you look, they use only a little bit of run memory because the rate to run with low run memory. If you look for the small storage NAS, the DS, 220223J, you have uh, only 2 gigabytes of run and you need to manage with this. And this knowledge in us or DSM, it's made to work with low run memory capacity. Other thing, if you look, you have this PTFS running and they are claiming space. Because we decide last video to run PTFS, it means that you don't need to defragmentate your data or your hard drive because basically they will do it for you automatically and it's one of the good things for the PTFS. So here all the applications running, all the connections, in my case I have only this user connect with this IP address. If I have more users they will appear everything that's running and what they are accessing. So if they have some specific application or a specific folder or location that they access, you're gonna be able to see it in a way to track it and you can kill the connection if you don't think that it's safe or you have any problem. You can define speed limits, you can define performance alert and other settings. Let's come here and the way, the thing that I want to do is my users. So here is the basic page. If I come here, I can have my control panel, I can have my applications, you can have my file system and other things. So if I come here, I have my control panel and here in control panel I have my users or all the permissions for the users. Here I have my group and my users. What I suggest you is first create the groups that you want and then start to add users on it. So the groups that you're gonna do supposedly that we have a company and have two departments, the engineer department and HR department. And I want that all the HR department keep the information on the HR side and I want that the engineer department to keep everything they side. Potentially HR can have access for the engineering but the engineer definitely don't have access for HR because it's the TNT data and no one wants to export or have access for it. So in this way, let's create first the HR group. So the HR group, I put next and here because I didn't create any user yet, I will not define it, I put next. And then after this one, I will put next again because I don't have any share folder at this stage. I don't have any code defined. And the applications. What I suggest you is to have access for DSM, for have access for this portal, 
the file system in this way they can modify and can look what's the data that they have and depend on what's the application let's get the smb that will be the somebody can connect it and the rest i can decline the access if for any reason they need ftp you can permit it and we're gonna configure it in the future so now we can put next after this one we can define what's the maximum usage for each user or the speed in our case we're not gonna define but if you have a reason to define here's the time and put next now they have overview for this page we only put next and it's done so we just create the hr group let's create another group say engineering group so put here and put ng and here i created a second group called engineering and put next i don't have any users so i'll put next again next again next again and i want for the engineering group I have access for dsm this portal ftp file system and smb nothing else i want them to have access so block it don't worry later on you can come back in this page and can modify it accordingly so let's put next i don't want to define any speed but in the case let's define some uh, some speed let's say that i want mass that they download if i look here they are going for kbps Yes, kbps so let's say that i want to choose masmo 5 megabytes for download and 5 megabytes of upload otherwise everyone will start to use and will create a traffic issue for me so now i put next and put done so now i have my you my groups i have my engineer group and my hr group the other groups is a standard ones live there you don't need to modify so now i can create others users for me so the first user that we'll create, let's create a HR user. Name of this HR user will be Philip, and that I will create a password for him. Potentially I can create a notification for him if I define the email, but in our case, we didn't configure it yet, so they will not send anything. So I put next, and now I define what group that they want. As a standard, they will have a group user, but I wanted to have a group HR, and put next. So now I don't create any share folder, so I cannot modify it put next next here will be all the applications that they can access using this group hr if i want to allow permission for all the application can allow for a specific user but in the standard they will have only permission as per group and i put next here i can define some limitations but i can define a red for group so i don't need to do anything here and I put done so now i create philip that it's part of HR group. Now let's create Peter. And I come here and I will create a password. And I put next. Same stage, but in this case, he's not HR, he's engineering. And I put next. And I come here next, next. The permissions here, exactly the same one that we configured before. And I put next and it's done. So now I create two users and those two users have access for the specific folders so if i come here now i can define the folders that i want to give access for them and i put create name let's say hr so hr i can put a description or not i can uh this is a share folder my place or i can put uh, hide supermissions this way i will want to leave exactly the same one thing that's interesting for you is enable recycle bin and restricted bin. What it means? It means that they will create a recycling bin and if you delete some file, file they go directly for recycling. And that's once a week or depend what's your requirements or how you can do the schedule, you can empty it or you can leave it for some while to be sure that if someone deletes something by mistake, they can recover the item. So I'll put next and here I can encrypt my data if HR is interesting for encrypt, but I'm not doing it because only a trial. So I'll put next. And here I want it to be checked information. And because HR will use more files, look like Excel and PDF and other things, I can enable compression. If they use more engineering programs, STPs, uh, if they use more videos and other kind of applications, you cannot compress it because it will not make so much difference and will make really slow your system. Now I can put next. And here will be all the configuration. So basically, I get for data integrity for check, they will check if I have any, group the data and recover it. 
I want to compress and the rest of the information. So I'm going to put next. So now I can define who's have access for this file. I can define specific users or I can define groups. In my case, I want to define groups and I want to that the HR have access for read and write. The rest of those will be no access as default, so we'll put apply. So now only Philip have access for this HR, but at the moment, Peter don't have any access for any application. So what I'm gonna do, I will come here and create a new one and put engineering or project, so any name that I want. I will leave exactly the same configuration and put next. I don't want to encrypt my data. I want to be sure that they will do the integrity check, but I don't want to enable file compress because they will use more videos, they will use more CAD programs, and if I compress it, it will not make any difference, only will slow down your system. So now I can put next, next, and define the group. In my case, this group will be only for the engineering group, and I put apply. So now I have two share folders. If I come here and I sing out, and looking as a Philip, I can have access only for my HR. If I do exactly the same, look out. If I'm looking as a Peter, I'll have exactly the same, only have access for the engineering group. But what's the problem for it? If I come back from admin, if I come here, I have only these two share folders and I don't have a specific home share folder for each user. What's the problem for it? Once that they start to install other packagings, let's say install email, or install knowledge drive, photos, and every, everything else, they will not have a specific location, it will be shared and everyone have access. And this I don't want to have because I want that information for the user will be kept for the user. So what we're gonna do, we come here in our panel, users, and come here in advance. Here in advance, we can set up some informations, but what we are really key to look at is this enable user service at home, and that they will create a basically share folder only for that specific user and only that specific user will have access for it. So I will put apply. So now I can come here and they will create homes and these homes will be permissions for each user. So if I come here in my file system, they will appear a homes for Philip, a homes for Peter and a home for Sauber Lab. Of course, I can see all of those because I'm using admin rights, but uh, Philip will only be able to see Philip's account and Peter will be only able to see Peter accounts. Other thing that's interesting, let's set up an email for it, because if I try to come here, advance, and I say, send admin, I don't have any email. So let's set up now email, put yes, and here notification, email, I can set up email. We have a few options to set up. You can use Google, you can use Outlook, QQ or Cosmo email. In our case, we're gonna set up with our Google account. And here I log in with my Google account and here is the notification that it will be done. So I can put apply and I can come here in my users. So now I can come here and I say allowed restart. So this restart will work if I define my email for Philip, I will allow that they can request a restart password using this email. The same thing, if I force you to change the passwords, everyone will change the password, or I can only define express date. I suggest you to define express date because I want that uh, in each 30 days, they will expire and put, let's say 60 days. Minimum password duration will be one day, so they cannot change every day, only to be sure that uh, it's look like they forgot and they are trying to restart it. Other thing, I can set a expired notification, so, one day or two days before, let's say, one day before they will receive a mail to say, please, it's time to restart your password. I can define history times, so I can say that they can, cannot repeat the password the next three times, and I put apply. So now I configured the basic permissions and I configured the users. So now what else I should do? I should come here in security. I come here, time for logout but I wanted to go for accounts. Here in accounts will be a two-factor authentication. It's really important you to do it because if someone know the password or they put look like, I don't know, password one, two, three, and that uh, if someone try to use it, they will be able to log in without any problem. So I suggest you to enforce it and say for all the users. In this way, if they want to access it, 
not local in your network, but external in your network, they will need to have two-factor authentication. Other thing, it's account protection. I'll come here and I'll say enable account protection. In this way, if they try to look in more than five times in one minute, they will block for 30 minutes your user and that uh, they cannot access. The same thing for here. If they try to log in 10 times with some applications, in with one minute, they will block for 30 minutes until they get unblocked and then put apply. I want to set up now. I can set up now or I can set up late. If I put set up now, they have two options for authentication. You can use the standard uh, application for Google or any other two-factor authentication or you can use directly the application for Synology. If you decided to use this knowledge application, you can do no password login. Suppose that you want to set up now again, suppose that you want to set up now the two-factor authentication. You can come here in your user, personal, it will appear here, and here will be all your information. You can have your account, account activity, who's disconnected, if you want to kill it. What happened? Because you set up the two-factor authentication, all time that a user will log in, there will appear this security request what you need to define a way to log in. You can verification code or you can a harder key, let's say verification code, and that you are forced to do it in order to be able to use your system. So, so only after you set up your two-factor authentication, you can access it again. And it means that all the user is forced to have this set up as extra security. And if you come here, they will show it. If you want to set up another option, you can set up here, you can display, you can deliver in other things. And if you want to set up other options, you can always come here. So in this way, we finish this video, we show the base information, how to create or set up groups, users, and share folders. In all this video, we're gonna start to show more in-depth configuration in order to build a better system for you. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, Consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.